let's talk nutrition and what you need to know for your board exam. So we need to pay special attention to how nutrition, how the diet, how foods and beverages are going to affect the teeth, the teeth and the mouth, you know, so we need to think about it as a bigger picture. If we have a client who doesn't eat meat, is that going to affect how their teeth are? Their teeth might even do better in a lot of cases. Or what if you see a client where their gums are bleeding consistently? You know, they brush three times a day. They're even seeing you for cleanings more often, but their gums are just bleeding like crazy. Per more examination and asking more questions, we might realize maybe they have a vitamin deficiency. So do you know which vitamins could affect the gums? Do you know which vitamins might cause the gums to bleed more if a patient is lacking in them? There's such a thing as getting too many vitamins as well, but that's more on the rare side of not getting enough. Or maybe your patient um, really likes, you know, oranges or really likes milk and oranges, but they hate vegetables. They don't eat any vegetables, but they love milk, oranges, and I don't know, steak. They might be deficient in certain things. So we need to know all of that. But then let's say their gums are, ble are bleeding. Um, let's even take it to the extent where you know the patient has a zinc deficiency. Okay. We need to take it even further and say, we suspect you have a zinc deficiency. Talk to your doctor, talk to your nutritionist, you know, this is kind of as far as I go, but let me tell you from my knowledge as a dental professional, what you can eat, what you can drink, even taking a supplement, but it's always better to kind of refer to foods and beverages instead, usually foods, um, what you can eat to bring up your zinc so you're not as deficient. And then come back in three months, let's see if the gums, the teeth, everything are healthier along with brushing and flossing. So this is just an example of our nutrition PowerPoint point our nutrition unit that I go through in the board exam prep academy so I kind of explain a little bit about everything like proteins water minerals vitamins carbs um, fats you know we talk about all of that but I like to have the PowerPoints be to the point and very concise and then I kind of talk about it for um, further too right but, and there's even some fun little videos just to kind of break up studying a little bit. So if you're studying and kind of learning at your own pace, it's just kind of fun to look at little videos here. So, um, but you also need to know, so before we go further, you need to know about macronutrients and micronutrients. So as an example, what is a macronutrient? What is a micro? So macros include carbs, proteins, and fats. Micros are vitamins and minerals. So we need all of that, but you need to know why is each one essential? Carbs, why do we need carbs? Well, for energy, brain function. Why do we need fat, energy storage, and vitamin absorption? Um, proteins, what's the good of you know proteins for muscle and tissue repair, among other things? But then vitamins and minerals, we all know we need them, but why? So we go through all of that in our nutrition sections. But then as a dental professional, we need to be focused on oral health. What does vitamin C, I talked about orange juice a lot. So what does that have to do with anything? So the in the increased intake of vitamin C um, just kind of helps the gums, helps against periodontal disease, okay? So if you're not getting enough vitamins and minerals and you're not brushing your teeth as well, that's gonna have an even bigger effect. But what about cavity prone patients? They should really have more calcium because that's gonna help to protect the teeth. Whereas if they're not getting enough calcium, that could affect the teeth in a negative way. What about sensitive teeth? If you have a client that tells you they suck on lemons, well, that could be a reason for their sensitive teeth among other things, but that could be one of them. What if your client suffers from getting canker sores monthly or weekly? Did you know that diet can play a part in that? It could even be their toothpaste. They might be using the wrong toothpaste for them. But do you see how as dental professionals, we need to know about nutrition, the diet, foods and beverages, but then we take all of that and talk about the teeth, talk about the mouth. So all of this, is within our PowerPoint. We go over dietary habits, how to provide feedback, and how to make recommendations. 
we're not doctors, so we can't claim to be doctors. We are still going to refer to the appropriate channels, but we can still talk to them. We're not just going to say, wow, your gums are bleeding like crazy. You might be lacking vitamin C and then not tell them how we feel they can get more vitamin C. We just go, oh, well, too bad, so sad, see you in six months. You know, we have to take it a step further. So we need to monitor, we need to make adjustments. At every appointment, we're always evaluating the patient and making adjustments to better their health. Now, we go over case studies as well. So just a little example here is a 35-year-old patient with red, swollen gums and a diet high in sugary snacks should incorporate more vitamin C rich foods to reduce inflammation. Plain and simple, did you know that? So you have a 35 year old patient, red, um, um, swollen gums, they eat a lot of sugar. Well, let's say, just say, okay, we need to fix the gum issue first, of course, but keep drinking that orange juice because that's actually going to help heal things up faster versus if you have a lack of vitamin C, it's going to take a lot longer. What about a 60 year old patient with chronic dry mouth should drink plenty of water to maintain hydration and to stimulate um, saliva production. That might seem simple, but did you know like 90% of people are dehydrated? They're not getting enough water. So just even simply mentioning that to your client can make a difference between their mouth feeling so much better. I love my big jug here, like speaking of water, this is the only way I could keep track of my water and make sure I'm drinking enough because there's like timelines here. This really helps me. Um, I highly recommend those to actually all of my patients. Fill it up. You can even put it in a separate cup um, if you don't want to drink like out of the bottle because it's kind of heavy. Help them drink more water, okay? If that's the only thing you take from this video, you should be drinking more water and help your clients drink more water as well. So we also talk about the food label, serving size, percentages, and key nutrients teenagers, what they might be lacking, um, eating disorders, talking to adults in general about their um, um, reduced basal metabolic rate, BMR, how to stay active, what all of this means, seniors, how to reduce being cavity prone, um, body mass index. So we go through all of this. This is what you need to know for the board exam. I keep it simple. And there's also some additional case studies about every vitamin deficiency. Easy to study, easier to remember if we go through case studies. That is all in there for you. So if anybody has any questions, definitely check out the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy at dentalil.com. Like this video if you want to see more kind of quick little insertions of knowledge you know we talked about nutrition today keeping it simple but make sure to study nutrition don't forget remember to go through your blueprint your candidate guide for your board exam as well that can really help you focus on what what about nutrition you need to study i have a blueprint dissections as well on the website reach out to me if you have any questions if you need anything I am here to help. So thank you guys for watching. Click like to this video if you like it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. I have to mention that because there's always new videos popping up that are a wealth of knowledge and I can really help you guys out. Okay, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. So are you thinking about becoming a mobile dental hygienist? Meaning you're not going to work for a dentist anymore. You're not going to purchase your own standalone practice like a physical location, but you're either going to see patients in your own set up a